Not so fun fact, my cat has ripped this garland down approximately three times since I put it up last week. I can see why he thinks it's fun. Hey guys, how are you today? So a ton of you seem to enjoy this water candle tutorial that I posted quite a few months back. I don't know why it's been so long since I've done a candle video, but I figured let's do one today and break them. Um, oh my gosh. Thanks. Just a little piece. These are called gothic water candles from what I've found. They kind of look like an underwater scene. This one does use wax. The other one is waxless and just has oil and a wig. They're a lot of fun to make and they turn out so unique. You can, of course, burn them, but I would treat these more as a decorative piece. If you're not caught up on my most recent videos, I'll link them in the description box below. I just posted this huge art supply and craft supply haul and my bullet journal plan with me. But now, without further ado, let's get into making the awesome candles. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about the different supplies that I'm using. So here you can see some small pillar candles. I also chose to buy another size of pillar candle that is just a little bit wider and shorter. The choice is absolutely up to you. You can use taller ones as well, but you'll also need a really tall container for that. So keep that in mind. A smaller pillar candle is going to be a lot easier to do in terms of not needing as much wax to melt. And of course, the container size that you'll need to dunk it in will be more reasonable as well. Next, you'll need some wax to melt, and I definitely recommend getting different colors, but if you want to do all white, that's cool too. Here I got a large pillar candle, and I'm going to be removing the wick. It came out so easily. I was expecting black before taking the wrapper off this one, but I'm very pleasantly surprised with the pretty navy blue color. Another option is to get scented wax cubes. If you're sensitive to really strong scents, you might want to steer clear of this option because I'm not going to lie, I wasn't too keen on the mountain air or lavender smell, but it wasn't too overwhelming for me. Another great option is to get a giant pack of white wax. Use a 40 or 50% off coupon if you can. I have this paraffin wax and you'll need colorant of some sort. I'm using actual candle colorant, but you can also use crayon wax. Just kind of keep that on the DL because it's not recommended in the professional world. The next supply is a lid of some sort and you want this to be one that's not going to melt. So I recommend a metal lid instead of a plastic one. I got mine from a type of glass mason jar. There's different types but you want to make sure that it's wide enough to fit the candle of your choice inside if you do use one of the normal mason jar lids it's going to be a two-parter so you'll want to glue that together like I'm doing here you can use a super glue e6000 or just take the easy route and do hot glue because you don't have to wait at all for that to dry another thing I do with this hot glue is after it is pretty much secured in there I also take a layer around the top opening and the bottom opening if that makes sense so water isn't going to get stuck in there and cause it to rust or anything. After your lids are prepared, you want to get a giant bowl and fill it with cool or cold water. I like to put some ice cubes in to make it extra chilly. And you'll also need some sort of container to melt your wax in. I do recommend the giant candle making pitcher, but you could also use a tin can. Just be really careful when holding it and maybe use a pot holder because it will get extremely hot. Now I have about half a pot of water on my burner. I have it up to the medium heat setting. This is just going to create a double boiler. I have my wax as you can see in the pitcher and I'm going to set it in there and let it melt. With this wax I'm going to prepare the lid and secure the candle inside so you don't want it to be extremely hot at this point. You can just let it cool down for a couple minutes until you can see on the side of your container it's like turning opaque once it gets to that point that just means that it's going to set up more quickly you won't have to wait as long you can pour a little in the lid like I'm doing here and then just set your mini pillar candle inside and wait for it to kind of get stuck there and you can fill a little layer around it as well to make sure it's extra secure now comes the most fun part of this project and basically this is going to be the rest of the video me pouring different colors of wax and showing you how it reacts with the water, the different designs that it creates. It's so cool and a lot of fun to do. You want to be careful though because obviously you're pouring hot wax into a space that is close to your fingertips so if you do want to be extra careful you could wear protective gloves. You could try and hold the lid with a pair of tongs so your skin is nowhere near the wax but I just choose the route of being extra careful and I just make sure that my fingers are at the back of the lid and I pour 
for the wax at the front. So there's very slim chance that the wax would hit my skin. And even if it does, it's going into the water so quickly that it probably wouldn't get much contact time before hitting the coolness. The moment that the wax does hit the water, it's going to instantly harden. And depending on how much wax you put and how quickly you move the candle under the water is going to determine how it grows and forms. And by the way, this is just the plain white paraffin wax that I'm using for these clips here. Next, I took a couple of the different blue wax cubes, the scented ones, and I just melted those in with the leftover white to get a very, very light blue. I mean, some of you might not have even noticed that it changed colors right away because it's such a subtle difference. I do think that this one actually is easier to work with though. It's probably because of the different scent oils and color oils that are in with the wax. It's easier to build up from my experience here. There's a couple different ways that you can pour. One, you can pour the wax before sticking it in the water and then obviously just dunk it really quickly. And this way it won't spread as much as the other way, which is pouring it while you put your hand further and further into the water. So pour it while the lid is in motion, descending into the bowl. You just wanna make sure that at first, the hot wax has a point of contact on the cool hardened wax before dunking it under. If any formations break off of your piece, you can regrow that part by just pouring more wax on. And with the part that broke off, you can take that and remelt it. If you enjoy candle tutorials and you maybe wanna see more on my channel in the near future, please give this video a thumbs up. And I'm also going to link some of my candle related videos from the past in the description box below. I have this beautiful rainbow crayon melt one, a cupcake, and the water candles that I mentioned at the beginning. I'm taking all the scraps out and I'm just going to dry them off a little bit first because water and wax do not mix very well. So you wanna dry them off a little bit and then put them back in the container and remelt and you don't have anything going to waste. Whoa, new hand, who dis? So this is my fiance and he was like kind of, talked into doing this but then when he was doing it he thought it was pretty cool so now he's going to try and create a candle to top mine i don't think that's gonna happen but we'll see Did something fall off? Did it crumble? A few things fell off, babe. <laughs> you can't go any taller. No, I don't have a deep enough bowl for that. That is a masterpiece. Thank you. <laughs> you like that flat top? Now Craig has decided to add red to his candle. I basically just put more of the white paraffin wax in and then a ton of the red colorant. You want to just glop it in to make it as bold and vivid as possible. Unless, of course, you want a more pastel look. We kind of made a lot more of this wax than needed, so if this is something that happens to you and you don't want to waste all that excess wax, get some silicone molds. We have these cupcake ones here and just pour the hot wax in and after it hardens, you can keep the wax cubes in with your supplies and remelt them at a later time. Finally, he chose to do that really dark navy to get a patriotic candle. This is the giant pillar candle melted down. I only had three lids prepped and I wanted to try another one. So I grabbed the salsa jar from the fridge. It's almost gone because it's delicious. If you've never tried this, I 10 out of 10 recommend, but I'm using the lid from the salsa. I chose to stick with with the navy wax, I remelted it because it had already hardened by the time I got my candle prepped. Since you all already know what's going on here, I want to take a second to remind you guys if you do enjoy the videos on my channel and you never want to miss one, please become a subscriber by clicking the red subscribe button below and also the bell icon so you get notifications just in case subscriptions mess up because sometimes they've been doing that. If you end up creating one of these candles, I'd love to see a photo, so send it to Instagram. My contact information is on the screen. Just use hashtag SoCraftastic and at Sarah Lynn T. You can also send me photos on Twitter by using the hashtag SoCraftastic and at Sarah Lynn T. If I get enough submissions, I'd like to start featuring your guys' work in my videos. So send stuff in and there's a chance that you'll see yourself here next week. Once the candles are complete, carefully place them on a paper towel to dry out. These are fragile pieces, so you wanna be careful not to pick them up by the wax, pick them up by the lid. 
Personally, I think I touched on this in the intro, I am going to use these as artistic pieces, kind of like a sculptural decor piece. I'm not actually going to burn them, but you can burn them if you choose to. It'd probably be helpful if you didn't cover the wick like we did in most of these, but the light blue one, you can see the wick in the middle. I hope to see you guys back here in my next video. I post every single Friday and Sunday. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.